Okay, welcome back. Today is January 4th, 2021. Happy New Year, everybody. This is our first DevSync of the new year. We're going to catch up on things. Um, we had the last week off, and uh, so I don't expect that um, they got everything done, but we'll see. Uh, I know that uh, I was busy ordering parts for the uh, Mark II dev kits, and uh, those have all been placed. Uh, we've got all of the parts flying to and fro to the various places to be assembled, and uh, those are on track to uh, to get done uh, by the end of this month, uh, which means that we should be able to ship them in February as planned. So, um, so I think that's a good start for the year, and. Uh, let's check in with everyone else here uh, and see how things are going. Uh, Chris Fair. Yeah, so today I worked a little bit on getting my new materialized view integrated into the code. Um, but most of my time today was spent um, back and forth with Ken um, looking at this microphone issue on um, the PandaCore build. We get closer and closer um, all the time. <laughs> um, now, and Ken can probably give you some more down to the nits details, but um, it's down to basically when we try to read from the microphone, that read call from the microphone is failing. And we think it has something to do with, um, well, I think it has something to do with the settings, like the, the sample rate and all that good stuff. But as Ken will mention, um, basically the configs are the same as they are for the QT build as they are for Panacore and the QT build works. So I had the exact statement in our code where it fails, um, but that statement goes out basically pulse audio and import audio and, and does things kind of low level. So, um, so like I said, we're, we're closer than we were uh, yes, on Friday or Wednesday, whatever, Wednesday, um, but we're not quite to the uh, smoking gun yet. So um, I will continue to do whatever I can to help Ken um, poking through our source code and through Pi Audio, um, and, uh, and Ken's doing some more of the, of the lower level stuff. So I'll continue to do that and hopefully we'll figure out what's going on here and uh, get our microphone fixed. All right, great, thanks. Uh, Gez. Um, yeah, so I guess to extend on that a little bit, um, there is a patch that has been released by a you know an open source patch uh, that can test out first, and and uh, Pentacore um, applied and said it seems to be working well for them. So it doesn't actually fix the issue. But it handles it. It handles the error more gracefully. So, um, uh, so there is that. Uh, at least there was also a um, the issue where um, the precise download would time out um, got pegged down to because they're using SquashFS um, first read of of any file basically um, is a bit slower until it um, unpacks it and. Um, caches it and stuff. Uh, so when micro first boots and it tries to hash a really large binary file, that takes a long time uh, and times out. But um, anyway, so I've, we've increased the timeout on that um, temporarily, uh, but I'm still of the firm belief that we don't actually need to do that um, because we should just be shipping the precise binary and not trying to download it on the fly. Yeah, um, so what's involved in, I mean, I, I think we can make that call. I don't see any reason to, I mean, I certainly agree that that binary file should be part of our build and not part of, it shouldn't be considered data. It should be considered code, right? So it should be subject to yeah. update the update process and not, you know, anything else. So what's involved in packaging that up and making that part of our our So uh, it's already, build version? it's already packaged up. Um, the problem was, like, because when you intuitively, when you package it up, you just you just include the binary, right? But because of the way that we download it, it needs the tarball um, with it. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't think that it doesn't think it exists because it, it checks the chart, it checks the tarball rather than the actual engine itself. Um, Ooh, and so that was also 
with the model. Yeah. Anyway, so right. so at the moment we're just, we're just packaging up both the tarball and the extracted binary and the tarball and the extracted model, um, which we shouldn't need to do. Um, and so then I'm also uh, doing some work with OKA to um, to change that process a little bit so that it, it no longer requires that tarball to be there, um, which you know slims down the whole thing a little bit. Um, and everyone in the community seems pretty happy to to pull that out. Um, we may th there's also the the precise plugin. You know, we can move directly to a precise plugin um, if we want to. But yeah, but both things aren't too much work. So. Well, the plugin seems fine, but it wouldn't it? Yeah, it seems like you still need to solve that issue because you don't want that issue to become part of the plugin, right? Yeah, totally, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm all in favor of fixing that because it sounds like it's a mess, and let's just make it clean. Yeah, I'm not really sure why it got done that way when nothing else that we do works that way. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the skills kind of work that way because every time it boots up right now, it goes out and tries to update all the skills. Um, oh, I, yeah, I yeah. remember that, right? So I'd love to blame somebody just for that, mind that, but that we to fix it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I did a bit of that. Um, I did some more um, DBus investigation, um, very a very small amount to try and to wire up the Wi-Fi screens. Um, Open Voice OS is now using our uh, our new Wi-Fi Connect skill or or a fork of it anyway. Um, so that's that's cool too. Uh, and yeah, I was mostly responding to. Kickstarter backers and stuff, um, catching up on, on emails from the holidays and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, people are, are generally generally pretty excited that we're we're finally shipping dev kits. Um, there was a few mentions of like, you know, here we go, Chinese New Year is gonna gonna um, gonna be the the next thing that that jumps in our way. But I I hopefully not stupidly uh, assured them that we'd accounted for this and that if we come out in in a month's time and say Chinese New Year screwed us, then they have my personal blessing to point and laugh and ridicule us. Yes, we so are well not aware of Chinese New Year um, <laughs> and we are getting stuff all done before that happens. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's me, I think. Uh, okay. Uh, Derek. Yeah. Uh, so today I've been working a little bit on uh, double checking stuff on. So I cut a couple more laser cut um, enclosures, put them together, feel good about it. Uh, I've kind of handed that off to Chris and Josh to do purchasing. Uh, I think they're on it. Josh gave me the thumbs up. Um, <clears throat> And then a little bit this afternoon, trying to figure out how to get things to China. This uh, been some new added uh, hurdles for shipping to China that I've discovered. It's the EEI requirement that um, you have to file to ship to China. So our boards, um, we've got to send some consigned parts to the assembler. And I'm still actually, as we speak, I'm kind of working on and trying to figure out how to do this maybe through DHL because um, I, I did not have success at FedEx. Um, so yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, I need to get that, you know, hopefully I can still get that out today. Um, Johnny's helping me too, if I didn't mention that already. Uh, so yeah, that's been my day so far. Okay, great. I just want to mention for everyone who's questioning uh, or concerned about this. Uh, the parts that Derek is talking about are actually optional parts. They're something that we're testing out, but they're not required for the for the dev kits. So um, we've got a, a little experiment going on, and uh, we uh, want to see if uh, the PCBA factory can uh, solder these onto the uh, boards better than we can do by hand. So um, anyway, it won't impact the dev kits shipping. I would imagine, given that the chips are sourced from Fort Meade, Maryland, that it would be easier to get them out of the country, but apparently not. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ken, last but not least. Well, I guess we haven't done Josh yet. 
Anyway, go ahead, Ken. All right, so um, where to start? Uh, so I created a, what I would say is leave precise alone for now. Um, it's one less moving part. Um, we want to get this build and this image working and it works as is. I mean, it's, it's not that bad what it does, right? I mean, it, it looks at the tar and it takes the checksum of the tar rather than having to take the checksum of the entire binary. Um, uh, you know, and it also does the same thing for the model and downloads them on demand. Now, I suspect some of the problems we were seeing earlier had to do with some of the stuff that's coming out from Panacore. And again, I don't know their boot or build process. So some of this stuff just comes to me piecemeal, but it seems like they're unzipping some volumes on boot. Uh, and that could have potentially been the uh, cause of the difficulty with um, unzipping uh, or calculating the checksum over the TGZ. If it wasn't completely unzip from squash FS, then it's going to have to wait. It's going to have to go through that whole cycle of give me this chunk and now wait until it gets unzipped and then squash probably has to go out of its way. So anyway, um, I think that um, he hit on the head. I think he's on top of that. I don't know for sure, but um, I don't know if there's anything you can do about it. The other thing I suspect that was a problem of downloading precise was simply they don't wait for the network to come up and be verified it's up to spawn us. Uh, I believe that to be true. Um, so if we get spawned and we expect to have a network in the load micro, is that what you mean? By spawn? Yeah, in other words, the, I think they're running Mycroft before the network connection has been established. And that's why you were seeing a lot of those kind of DNS and, uh, and fetch errors in the log files. So once the network settled out, then it would recover. But that, you know, goes through many retries. Anyway, there's some things. So we should be able to load Microsoft before we've got a network connection. Like, anyway, yeah, so. well, except that that's where the precise errors are being thrown from, because it's going to the back end and trying to download precise, and it can't get it because it doesn't have a network connection. So it keeps retrying, and that consumes a lot of bandwidth, and it slows everything else down and has a sometimes a cascading effect. But... Anyway, all I would say is leave precise alone for now. We can we can get to it later, um, but it would be one less moving part that we have to deal with in this bringing up of the Panacore image. Okay, uh, sorry um, to interrupt, Ken, uh, but yeah. the I think the reason this precise download issue came up is because we were investigating why the mic didn't work, and so is this not related right. to the mic not working? Well, I mean, it's related to the mic not working in that if Precise doesn't get installed properly, then you shouldn't expect anything to be recognized. Right. Okay, so you're you saying know, you have a different solution for this that will be... What I'm saying is reliable. that's not the problem. That's not the problem we have. So so um, I also tried to build a TensorFlow and Basil uh, last weekend uh, because I got bored on Saturday, and that reminded me of what a mess we're in with Precise. And why precise is deployed the way it is because it doesn't run on many versions of Python with that version of TensorFlow. So everything's bundled pretty much as a binary together. Uh, again, um, we can get to that, but I, I don't think that's imperative right now. What I did do is I um, created a script because the reason I wasted my time over the weekend trying to rebuild precise was I thought maybe we had a bad precise build for Arch 64. And I don't even know how the hell we got a precise build for Arch 64. <laughs> it's the first Arch 64 the operating system we've ever tried to run on, right? QT of this. So I don't know how that happened, but it did. And so I said, well, let me make sure that's not it. I was going to recompile it. Then I realized that building TensorFlow on an 8 gig Pi 4 would take seven days. And building the build tool, Basil, will take 33 hours. So it has to be, you know, cross-compiled tool chained up in the cloud. Um, and then I said, well, let me see if it is precise. So I wrote a script that doesn't use precise, just to latch onto the microphone and record. And it throws the same error. So that demonstrated to me that it's not precise specific. So then I could stop wasting time on that. But then I download, downloaded port audio, which is where the exception is being thrown, and built it from source and put some debugging in there and figured out that at the end of the day, the root cause is a broken pipe being reported, which is a bit of a misnomer 
because the broken pipe being reported on an input channel really means that you're getting overrun errors and that you can't keep up with the mic input rate. And that's fine. Um, and that's where I'm at, trying to figure out if that is endemic in their build because we're containerized, welcome to the wonderful world of containers, or if it's um, perhaps because it's misconfigured, but as Chris mentioned earlier, we're looking and seeing that all the config files seem to be the same. Uh, but I will say this, our, our mic comes in at 48K and it comes in as a 32-bit entity, which is a bit uncommon. It's a high-end audio device. Um, in fact, I only think 32 bits are ultimately used anyway, but the point is that has to all be, or yeah, 16, I think it has to be configured properly as well, and that could be the reason we're getting the overrun errors, but again, why we're not getting them on the other machine is beyond me. Uh, what I told um, Ricardo before I went on vacation was I suspect it's performance related, and after my digging today, I'm even more suspicious that it's performance related. So um, that's that, that's where I'm at. Um, and I'm in the middle of the port audio code and I'm trying to see if I can, you know, catch it and make it right without, you know, basically just missing frames all over the place um, and ruining the quality of the signal. And then uh, I'm gonna start one by one going over the two builds um, and seeing if there's anything from a surface level like configuration stuff or versioning or anything that's different but uh yeah so that's what i'm doing okay well this this is a uh, you know we're not dealing with a real-time operating system so this is the kind of stuff that you know should give us nightmares um the all right so do you have a version that you can pass to ricardo that doesn't include precise that's a, just like a, basically a pass-through microphone Sort of. Uh... I could I give him. I could give it to him. It's a five-line piece of code uh, script, but uh, I'm pretty sure he knows it's not precise because I posted it in the thing today. Uh, you guys can keep up in the uh, Panacore dev. Precise thing. Uh, I post the precise thing is is fixed enough for now. Like because okay. because it's now being distributed, like packaged up um, in the way that Microsoft expects with the tarballs and everything. We we shouldn't hit that problem anymore. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the other problem with that, yeah, as Gez mentioned, and, and I failed to mention, the other problem with that was they were whacking the tarball after they unzipped it. And Precise then says, what's the checksum on the tarball? Oh, it's not here. I better go get it. So they, they fix that. Well, that build doesn't hit the streets yet, but okay. I believe so. So we're just down in, in this port audio module. and we're, to we're down at the point where we're getting mic input I guess we used to call them underrun errors, but they're called overrun errors, I guess, technically. But we can't keep up with the mics feeding us data packets at 48K, 32 bits. Okay, so that sounds like the... So if it's an underrun, what you're saying is that the port audio is not able to fill the buffer with data from the XMOS fast enough? No, it is an overrun then. Yeah, technically okay, correct. Okay, no, okay. it's the exact opposite. It's filling it fine the driver can't keep up with lib alsa's uh stopping the buffer okay so yeah so the the data coming in from the xmos chip is overrunning the buffer and we're not consuming yeah. it fast enough yeah okay. and remember i mean when you think about it that kind of makes sense certainly from a misconfiguration potential but even potentially from performance your standard stuff is going to be 16 kilohertz 8 bit maybe 16 bit right and we're 48 kilohertz 32 bit you know, so, I mean, I've seen, I think the first version came in at 8-bit. So anyway, yeah, I don't know. I, I just don't know enough yet. And and maybe I could fix it. Maybe I can get in there and fix it. So, you know, I'm just It sounds just like the kind to... of thing that might be, I don't think that it should be, a, it shouldn't be a performance issue. If it's a performance issue, it's at like a really high level or a really low level, I guess, I'm thinking. Um, you know, between... Really low level. Yeah. It's well, the audio, I mean, like... it's the, it's the hardware is filling the buffer. Right. And the first level driver can't pull it out fast enough. Which that's makes really me think that, that that's a that should be a Panacore issue. Like if they're on top of this, if they're aware of this, then they should be able to figure that out. I think it's got to have something to do with priorities of the, you know, uh, the. I somewhere. agree, and I and I agree it's a Panacore issue. But I was asked last week to do everything we can. No, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm not I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. Uh, I'm just okay. saying that I think they may have more insight into the low level, uh, you know, setting up well, priorities so. and whatnot. So I hope so. <laughs> all right. So are they're up to speed on where you've gotten with all of this? They so, are. Okay. Cool. If you all want right. to read all the back and forth between Ken and I, Dev Channel, we've been back and forth quite a bit. So gotcha. if you're interested in any of the low, low level stuff we've been talking about. It's all in there. Sounds super fun. Uh, all right. Um, well, I, I guess I didn't mention on on the record here that uh, we're going to be shipping out some more uh, SJ201s, um, and we'll send those out. Uh, they should get a new one of those, so they'll have a, a fully working system uh, when they get that. Uh, we're going to ship those out today. And uh, everyone who doesn't have a fully working SJ201 will get one as well. Is there any errata data on the Rev5 boards? Because, you know, like there's the I2C detect issue. I just want to make sure that Kevin didn't overlook something. Um, are there any particular like, other issues that you're concerned about or like? The thing that comes to mind, yeah, is um, that I2C detect will uh, erase the LEDs. Oh, OK. Well, that's I don't I haven't heard of that issue before. Uh, he knows about it. We, okay. we discussed it. Oh, okay. It was one of the first ones I reported. I'm just wondering if there's a process so that he doesn't forget because it was early on in the process, and it sounds like he's been off on other stuff. I'll uh, I'll mention it with him. Uh, okay. I'll talk to him later. Okay. Uh, anything else that people want to uh, bring up at this point? Okay. Um. Well, it sounds like we're working full steam ahead at getting uh, the hardware is underway, and we're working towards getting this uh, the Panticore software distribution system up and running. And um, so we'll just keep working on it until we get it done, because we got a lot of a lot of uh, fun stuff to get to in terms of improving the user experience once we get a user experience online. So we'll get there. Um, all right. Well, thanks everybody. Um, we'll just call it here for today. Um, and stay in touch. Uh, before before we break, uh, are we expecting to meet with Panacore at any point in the near future and circle the way? Yeah, I was going to say once we get this once we get this build out, we should do another demo. Um, so I flagged that with them. They're obviously uh, uh, cautious. They want to make they want to have everything working 100%, um, which is what we want as well. But you know, um, obviously demos are a good way of seeing how close we are to that and. Um, putting some, yeah, identifying where we're not and um, and putting the pressure on there. So, uh, so yeah. Well, there's no, there's no think, need to just make them have a demo, but I mean. No, we don't, I, we don't need I that demo to be in person or anything. Like, I, or, you know, as person as we get, <laughs> as in person as we get. We can do that via video. Um, and then I, I think assume we they're we're aware at. this is on them right now. Is that correct? That we're assuming that this is in their ball court or. Is there any possibility for cross communication and they think they're waiting on us? Uh, for which issue are you talking about? For any issue. For any issue. Yeah, as in they know that, that we're still waiting on a completely working system. Yes. So they're, they're trying to pick into the, I mean, you're in the, you're in the chat channel as well. Um, no, I just, wanted to, I, I just wanted to make sure because that, that's what I took away from there. I just wanted to hear you confirm that, yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah. That, they, that they need to get this image working, right, with this issue. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yes, agreed, we should be, uh, we should be catching up shortly. So I think um, once we test out these, these latest changes, um, and we, Derek, we need to get the, the Wi-Fi, that onboarding and Wi-Fi stuff really, you know, ticked off and, and sent over so they can get onto that as well. Um, ideally yeah. today. Yeah, it's still a good price. Um, yeah, if I can get past this uh, shipment stuff and yeah. then I can get back on that and ordering. I, we've got these two things left to order and this shipment dealt with and then I, I should be freed up to do that. Guys, do you know when the next Panic War build's coming out? With the Pulse Audio patch thing? 
Sorry, my internet dropped out. If that was a question for me. Um, do you know when the next Fanacore bill is coming out with the Pulse Audio Fix? Uh, if it's not if it's not already built, then I will trigger a build now. Okay. Let me know um, when you check if it's, if it's when it's ready. If it's already ready, yeah. whatever. Yeah, I'll I'll be going to check after this. Okay. Well, on the demo front, um, I like the uh, the process that Josh instituted uh, over a year ago in terms of um, doing continuous uh, weekly demos just to let the team know where we are. So I, I'd like to start doing that now. Uh, I don't want to uh, interfere with work, and I, but I don't think that um, we're not at a stage where you know I think doing a demo is going to be. Uh, preventing us from doing any useful work. So, um, so let's go ahead and set that up for Friday at the latest. If there's something available sooner, let's do, we, you know, we can set it up sooner, but um, but for sure by Friday. And yeah, the, the, these don't need to be like publicly visible videos, right? We can just do the whole thing on a phone camera, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The second you can do them all in a phone camera, and either Derek or I can get our hands on a working SJ201, um, I want to do a super professionally lit, very well. Um, it does not like scripted, but like you know, put together like end-to-end -to -end demo because that that opens up a ton of doors for us in terms of like keeping the business team uh, busy and starting to push through, you know the the business problems that, that we're, we're trying to solve, which have in, in many, many cases been on hold pending getting the technology to the point where we could do a demo, right? Okay. Uh, so Gez, can you set up that demo um, with Panticore uh, for Friday? Or- uh, You wanna do it? So, I mean, I thought, we don't need to do it with Canticore if, if their stuff yeah. is mostly out of the way. Yeah, I thought I thought it feels like a some in somewhat a waste of time to spend like 10, 15 minutes with like eight people on a call while we do a thing. So I wonder if we just do that by video and and set up a meeting to actually talk about the outcome of that um, and where we're going next and, and all that sort of stuff. Is that Well, I'll let Josh weigh in on that because uh, this was uh, his innovation the first time around. What, you, what, what was that? It, it feels like a bit of a waste of time to have fifteen people, well, eight people on a call for 10 to 15 minutes while we play around with the device. Um, so my intuition would be to record the demo beforehand, send it out to everyone so everyone can consume it, and then have the meeting to talk about you know where we're at and what, what needs to come next. Uh, that's kind of not the point of the process initially. The point of the process initially is is to partially motivate, but then also partially highlight with the team where the problems are. The the issue with doing the demos in a scripted or pre-recorded way is that people get, get really used to using the interface and they don't go off script, right? There isn't the ability to inject additional questions or to to kind of go off off the beaten path. And as a result, you end up with a really successful video for a product that when you open it is really terrible. And so, you know, for the first few, I'd like to have our team all on board and so that we can ask questions and go back and forth. Um, but once they re once it reaches the point where the thing's useful and I can set it up in my kitchen, it ceases to be a real issue because, you know, we're all using it day to day. But right now, you know, none of us, at least I'm not using it every day, so. Yeah, I'd like to have everybody on the call at least for the first few. Okay. And yeah, then we can, you're right. Yeah. One of the things that we did have in place before as well was the ability for all the de developers, myself and Josh, to install the build uh, on a device that was all the same. Um, you know, it sounds like we might get very close to that this week with. Uh, Kevin sitting out some boards. Um, <clears throat> so that would be a good thing to do the day before the demo is to say, here's the latest build, fire it up. You know, even if it's not a priority for you, 
you know, it's not your main priority. Go ahead and install it. <clears throat> well, like yeah, we should that. all be running the latest version of the software, and that's one of the points of this Pantacore system, right? We just make sure we're all on the right branch. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, so there's there's two sides to it. Like, if if people are just like wanting the latest software, then then we can we can push that out to everyone automatically. Um, but you know, at this stage, we we do want to be going through that, you know, raw out out of you know unboxing kind of experience mm -hmm. um, over and over and over again as much as possible. So, um, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. OK, well, uh, yeah, guys, if you could organize that for Friday, that'd be great. And um, all right, so anything else? All right, then we'll call it there for real this time and talk to you all tomorrow.